I've been using Shimoda bags since they first launched the Explore 40 and Explore 60 litre bags back in 2018. Once I felt how comfortable they were on the back, I just couldn't go back to a different bag. But there was a fair amount of areas with room for improvement on those bags, which for me was largely addressed when they released the new range, the Action X series. And this is built for outdoor photographers. So you've got durable water resistant materials. You've got reinforced padding on the bottom, splash card YKK zippers, and a new roll top design for expandability, which I absolutely love. And I'll talk about that in this video. But I've been using the Action X50 as my main bag for over three years now. It's the closest thing I've found for my gear and my sort of style of constantly being outdoors in pretty harsh environments. Places like Tenerife and La Palma in the Canary Islands and also the Atacama Desert in Chile. And I've also used this bag as my checked luggage on countless flights and it's really taken a beating. I don't look after my gear. It's quite often just on the ground and I'm dragging it around. And despite that, Every single zipper still works, nothing is snapped or broken, all the buckles and clips are still working, and there's barely much signs of use on the bag. I mean, it's a bit dirty, I could probably do with cleaning it. But even on the front here, which spends most of its time on the ground being dragged around the floor, there's only some light scratches and signs of use. There's certainly no holes or tears or rips or anything that's even close to be in a rip or a tear, which is super impressive because I've been using this heavily for over three years now. So if you think these bags are a little bit expensive, just know that you're getting something that's gonna last you a long time, which is gonna save you in the long run, and it can really put up with some of the harshest environments on planet Earth. Well, now they've released the version two, and They've updated the 30, the 50, and the 70 that were already available. There's now two new sizes. So there's a 25 liter, and this one here, which is a 40 liter. This is the one I've been testing out for the past month or two. And so I've taken it on a short trip to the south of Turkey where I used it as my cabin bag. And then I used it in Menorca for the photo pills camp where I used it as my checked luggage. And I've taken it around some jaunts around Istanbul to photograph the moon. And a quick disclaimer, this bag has been gifted to me by Shimoda. They're not sponsoring this video, no money has exchanged hands. I'm under no obligation to even make a video, but I want to make a video because I've had years of experience with Shimoda bags. And as you can see, it's still holding up and I can happily and comfortably recommend these products to you because they are just incredible. And as well as new sizes, there are also new colors. So there's a mustard yellow color, which is very popular in the sort of mountain climbing scene. And there's also a teal color for the women specific bag. So there's three options for female specific straps and they are free when you purchase from the Shimoda website. And if you do purchase from the Shimoda website, you can get 10% off with code Wallace 10. But the beauty of Shimoda bags, so you've got rear access, you've also got side access. I don't use the side access because I've always got two tripods. Um, I always use the rear access and there's a huge cavity in this area of the bag where you can use core units, different size core units, depending on how much gear you have. And not all core units can be used in all of the bags. So the 25 liter and the 30 liter can only take the mirrorless core units and the small DSLR core unit. The small DSLR core unit, this one here, you can place it in the bag sideways and you can use it as side access. But the 40 liter and the 50 liter and the 70 liter can take the deeper DSLR core units. And the 70 liter is the only one that can take the larger DV core units. And these are more for huge cinema cameras or massive telephoto lenses like those used in sports and wildlife photography. Thankfully, Shimoda has a table on the website which shows you which core units fit in which bags and the recommendation for the perfect core unit for each and every bag. Now, even though I use mirrorless cameras, I use a medium DSLR core unit because I like the extra depth. I have some big lenses, things like my star tracker can go in a lot better. 
And it also means that I can stash a lens underneath my camera. And I find that the medium DSLR core unit is perfect for my setup, which is like two cameras, four lenses, a star tracker, some filters, and then a bunch of accessories. And then if I want to pack even more gear, I can use a small DSLR core unit and put that also in on top of the medium core unit. And that will be for like a big telephoto lens if I'm out doing moon photography or if I want to take like extra star trackers or that kind of stuff. And it doesn't have to go in the back. I can also undo the roll top and place it in there. If I'm not using the roll top or anything else, I can have top access to whatever I'm keeping in the small DSR core unit. But what's new with the version two? Thankfully, not a lot. And I say that because they haven't really drastically changed the design of the bag, which I'm really happy with because the design is as close to perfect as I've found. And they haven't added gimmicks to try and make you buy new products. They've updated the bag based on customer feedback. So they've basically just refined what was already a nearly perfect product. So one of my favorite new updates is the extra adjustability on the hip strap. You could already tighten the hip strap from the front, but the hip strap, which is removable, now has an extra strap here, which you can tighten. And the reason I love this is because in the summer, when I'm just wearing a t-shirt, I'm quite a slim guy. And on the version one, I just couldn't get the hip belt quite as tight as I would have liked. But this gets much tighter and it really takes the weight off your shoulders. And it's just much more comfortable. All the weight's on your core where you want it to be. And so I'm really happy that that's been added. And it's, a, it's removable, so if you don't want to use it, you could just remove the hip belt anyway. There's also now a grab handle at the bottom of the bag. So this was introduced on the version 2 of the Explore series. When I saw it, I immediately wanted it to come to the Action series because I normally leave my bag on the ground with the rear door open so I can access my gear. But then if I need to change positions by like 10 meters or 20 meters, now I could just pick up the bag like this without having to zip everything up and put it on my back. I could just grab it like that, take it to my next spot and just put it down on the ground so I've got all my gear there quickly accessible. The handle on the side of the bag is now a lot bigger, as you can see. And this now means it can be used as a luggage pass-through handle. So when you go into the airport, you can put this on your wheeled bag and put the handle through here so you don't have to carry your bag through the airport and to your destination. You could just stick it on the trolley and just pull everything with the wheeled trolley. The phone pocket on the left shoulder strap has been made bigger and wider. So this now accommodates bigger phones like the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I personally don't use this for a phone anyway. I just use it for my intervalometer because that's something I always want quick access to without taking my bag off. And also inside is a bit of webbing. So you can put a microphone on here if you're vlogging with your bag on your back, you're out hiking, you can just put the microphone in there, out of view, and um, you don't have to worry about clipping it onto your clothes or anything, so that's pretty cool. The drop pockets on the side of the bag, which I use to hold my tripods, these are now removable. So if you don't use them at all, you can remove them, get rid of a little bit of bulk, or you can reposition them to the hip belt, and you can hold a water bottle there, or you can use it to hold a lens, makes it great for changing a lens whilst you're out in the field and you don't want to take your bag off. And also happy to see that they reverted to a more traditional single button elastic tog. On the previous bags, there was a slightly different toggle where you had to push on the top to tighten it and then squeeze on the sides to pull it open. And I thought I'd get used to it, but even still, after three years, I was like, uh, do I need to push the top or squeeze the sides? So I'm glad they've just gone to a traditional toggle with a single button, which will completely remove any confusion and doubt when you want to tighten or release it. There's also now a dedicated air tag pocket. So inside this front pocket, there's a little Velcro pocket roughly here where you can put an air tag. I use this all the time, especially when I'm using my bag um, as checked luggage. So I can find my bag when I get to the other side. Sometimes it doesn't come out on the belt. They put it somewhere else because it's like oversized baggage. So I love having air tags in my bag so I can find my stuff, I don't lose it. And if it gets stolen, you might be able to retrieve it. And it's nice that it has a dedicated pocket. So on a lot of other bags, I'll just chuck an air tag 
and then I can't find it. It's like deep in a pocket somewhere and I'm digging around looking for it. So it's nice that it has a dedicated pocket. I can always quickly check if I have one in the bag or not. And it's put in a place where there's less chance of any interference. So the signal will be able to, to go quite far. It doesn't get blocked when you chuck it like right in the middle of the bag with all your camera gear and all that kind of stuff. So that's really well thought out. And talking of dedicated pockets, there's now a dedicated pocket in the bottom of the bag for the rain cover. And this now comes included with the bags completely free of charge. In the past, it was like an extra add-on that you had to pay extra for, but now all the bags come with the rain cover. It's got a dedicated pocket in the bottom of the bag. And this also helps to provide a little bit of extra cushion on the bottom of the bag, which is very, very welcome. And there are two dedicated laptop sleeves on this bag. They both existed on the version one, but they're now a little bit bigger and they have a little bit of extra padding. So one is here on the rear door. You can get your laptop in here, nice padding, so your laptop is nice and protected. I believe it fits a 16 inch MacBook Pro. And then there's another one on the large front pocket of the bag. So this pocket here is split into two with a padded wall. So you can put your laptop in the rear one. And that's great for going through airports because you have to take your airport out for security. So you've got quick access to this front pocket. You can pull your laptop out and put it through the x-ray machine. And then the last updates are to the heavy duty 70 liter bag, which now has extra padding and more support at critical points to help take the weight off your shoulders and just make the bag a lot more comfortable when you have a lot of gear. So as I said, I'm quite relieved they haven't drastically changed the design of this bag because I love it. All of the updates are based on customer feedback and they were stuff that we all wanted. And so they've just refined this bag to make it even more perfect. So what is it about this bag that I love so much? Well, the comfort is unmatched. It just feels like a warm, gentle hug as you're hiking the mountain and questioning your life choices. The shoulder straps are adjustable, so you can change the height here to fit different size torsos. The hip belt takes the weight off your shoulders. I love the rear access. It means I can just leave my bag on the floor in the field. I'm not carrying it with me. I can just dip in when I need to change gear and that kind of stuff. I've always got two tripods, so I love that there's a dedicated pocket on either side of the bag. And then if I need a third tripod, I can stick it on the front straps here. Theoretically, I could put a fourth tripod on this side here. I often use these for my hiking poles as well. But there's also a loop on either side of the hip belt. This is also great for just sticking the tripod temporarily or your hiking poles. You know, you might hike up and you need your poles and then you start hiking down or you're on flat ground and you don't want to use the poles anymore so you can just hang them from here. And I know a lot of guys who do mountain climbing and winter adventures and they hang all their carabiners and all their gear on these loops. The front pocket is great for just stuffing a jacket and your outer layers and some other bits and bobs. There's a hole at the bottom, so if you put a wet jacket in there, it's gonna drip out. You can also use this for a water bladder, and there's a pass-through for the straw, so that it comes from the side of the bag, and you can attach your straw to this loop here. And then I absolutely love the expandable roll-top storage, because if I go camping, I can get my tent, my food, cooking utensils, I can stuff my sleeping bag in the front pocket, and it basically turns this bag from a daily bag into an overnight bag. And the expandability is also super useful when I'm using it as a checked bag on a flight. So I'll put my camera and the core units inside a wheeled trolley. And then I'll use this for all my clothes, my tripods, my toiletries, and anything else I need to take on a trip away. And it's worth noting that the 40 liter and the 50 liter can be used as cabin baggage, depending on the airline, obviously, but as long as they're not overpacked and you're not using the expandable roll top, they will fit as cabin bags. So which size should you get? If you have a mirrorless camera, just a few lenses, and you don't need much outdoor gear, the 25 or 30 liter is a great choice. If you have a larger DSLR body or you have two mirrorless cameras with lots of lenses and extra gear, and you wanna be able to take a lot of outdoor gear, look at the 40 or the 50 liter, 
And then if you have a cinema camera or huge telephoto lenses, or you do a lot of overnight camping, multi-night trips, you definitely want to be looking at the heavy duty 70 liter version. When it comes to the 40 and the 50, I was quite surprised in that it didn't feel any different to the 50 liter. The, let me show you. <coughs> the rear doors are the same size and they fit the same core units. Where you lose a lot of space is in the height. You can see the 50 is a bit taller, which means it has one extra adjustment for the shoulder straps. There's an XL option but the 40 maxes out at just the large. So if you have a large torso, maybe you go for the 50. And yeah, most of the volume is lost in the expandable roll top storage. So if you don't think you're gonna use that much, the 40 will be better. It is a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact and a little bit lighter. But if you do want a lot of extra expandable space, the 50 definitely has quite a bit more space. And I noticed it when I was using it as a checked baggage for my trip to Bernorca. I had to leave a few things behind, like a few luxury things like my AeroPress. Couldn't fit in the 40, but I could have fit in the 50. So the difference is not huge, just that you get more space in the expandable roll top with the 50. Anyway, don't forget you can get 10% off Shimoda on their website by using the code WALLACE10. Let me know your thoughts. Have you used Shimoda bags yourself? What's your opinion? I'm certainly seeing a lot more of them in workshops and photography trips that I do, which is great. And thanks for tuning in to another video. If you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.